This is Clifford. He's a big red dog, and he's popular with kids. This is not the Clifford I'll be discussing today. I love you, Clifford. In late 1991, Orion Pictures was in deep financial trouble. The independent studio was known for nurturing talented filmmakers and taking creative risks. Orion had recently achieved great box office and critical success with two Best Picture winners in a row, Dances with Wolves and The Silence of the Lambs. You still wake up sometimes, don't you? you wake up in the dark and hear the screaming of the lambs. But those booms were not enough to make up for previous box office bombs like the Roseanne comedy She-Devil. <laughs> After all other bailout negotiations fell through, Orion was forced to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. This left a lengthy slate of completed films in limbo, including Robocop 3, The Favor, and Car 54, Where Are You? Wherever you go, there's that to follow! Oh my god! Over the next few years, the shuttered studio would slowly roll out these titles into theaters. And all of them underperformed. Jesus, Murphy, are you okay? I'm fine, Anne. Thank you for asking. On April 1st, 1994, one of the last films from their delayed slate finally saw the light of day. A family comedy where Martin Short pushing 40 at the time of production, plays a demented 10-year-old boy. My name is Clifford. And no, this was not an April Fool's joke. All right, let me set the scene. It's Christmas time 94. I'm at the video store, perusing the new release section. My eyes stopped on the box for Clifford. It kinda jumped out at me. And it features the following joke. What's the difference between Clifford and a pit bull? One will tear your heart out, scare your friends, and wreck your house. The other is a dog. <laughs> Sold. Not only did I rent it that night, but I would go on to rent it again and again. It's one of my childhood favorites. Many people didn't get it at the time, but oh, I did. Two nights ago, I watched a film that, uh, I'll be honest, I didn't uh, even know existed called Clifford. And <laughs> reading about Clifford ahead of time, I'm like, oh my God, it's, a tw it's at like 9% on Rotten Tomatoes. It made $172, right? Yeah. And I mean, I am not going to shut up about Clifford for 16 months and telling people like, if you guys see Clifford, Clifford is unbelievably funny. Flash down. It's not a little funny, it's spectacular. Would you please stop hitting the back of my chair? I am trying to sleep. I'm sorry, Miss Nice Older Person, but I don't know what you're talking about. Perhaps you were just having a nightmare about your early days in the circus. Why didn't it work? Like, what happened? I don't know, I think it was too weird for the room in 94 which doesn't mean it's too weird for the room in 2021. What a gorgeous, gorgeous child! Oh. Wait! As the opening credits roll, we see a series of storybook illustrations straight from the imagination of a young boy. One such image depicts a child gangster engaged in a mafia-style shootout while riding a dinosaur. Let's appreciate this for a second. I wonder what the New Yorker caption would be. Hmm. The character of Clifford is first introduced as an elderly priest at a Catholic school in the year 2050. The future looks much like the present. There are no flying cars, but there are large tomatoes. Goodbye, boys! He catches a troubled kid named Roger trying to run away. I say, who's throwing? <laughs> the kid is played by Ben Savage. You know, Fred Savage's little brother. My parents say no to everything I want. And you felt that blowing up the gymnasium was an appropriate response then? Yes, I did. In an effort to change his mind and scare him straight, 
Clifford tells the cautionary tale of his own troubled youth. <laughs> Beginning on a flight to Honolulu when he accompanied his parents on a business trip. Clifford is eccentric for a 10 year old, or any age really. He dresses in colorful suits with bow ties and always carries along his best friend, a plastic brontosaurus named Stefan. Oh, oh, damn it! Clifford! Why did you wake me? I didn't wake you, Stefan did. Why wouldn't you let him sleep? Clifford is obsessed with going to a place called Dinosaur World, and much to his dad's chagrin, he won't shut up about it. Oh, you're driving me crazy! Uh-oh, looks like daddy's gonna have a big stroke. And then he'll be talking like that. Oh, I swear to God. Clifford! In order to make his dream come true, he storms the cockpit and intentionally grounds the flight to Los Angeles, where the theme park is located. Stefan, hang in. His parents are completely fed up with him. Isn't that something, Stefan? His dad is played with hilarious intensity by Richard Kind. Where did you get that Walkman? Did you steal it? No. Oh my God! Is there no end to your madness? Desperate for a much needed break, he calls his estranged brother Martin, who lives in LA. I'm, I'm in a terrible dilemma. I, I, I have a tremendous favor to ask you. He begs him to take in Clifford for an indefinite visit. He went for it. I'm gonna go to Dinosaur World. <laughs> Uncle Martin is of course played by the late great Charles Grodin with his signature prickly persona. What do you mean you're out of chocolate? How can that be? I need chocolate. Mary Steenburgen plays his girlfriend Sarah. He recently surprised her with a new house, but it's only one bedroom and sits on a steep cliff. Whoa, that is quite a drop. Honey? To her, this signifies that he's uninterested in starting a family. And where's that kid supposed to sleep? Oh, honey, have you ever heard the word sofa bed? His brother's call came at the right time. Martin hopes that Clifford's visit will show that he doesn't hate kids. You never mentioned you had a nephew. I love my nephew. What's his name? I want to say Mason. Uh, Clifford, little Clifford. At the airport, he's met with quite the welcoming by his nephew. This is so cute. Come here, look. Don't reject me! Clifford is shot out of a cannon. I'm gonna go big. and he can hardly contain his excitement when he learns that his uncle was one of the engineers who designed Larry the Scary Rex, Dinosaur World's flagship ride. I'm Larry the Scary Rex, I'm a scary dinosaur, but don't be scared of my sharp sharp teeth and my mighty mighty roar. <laughs> so far so good for Martin's plan. Sarah's gonna be so excited to meet you, I told her how special you are to me. But we've never met before. Sarah's enchanted when she meets Clifford, and likewise. Whew, that's a lovely bathrobe you're wearing. I'm sure anyone else who wouldn't look half as lovely. Thank you. What a sweet thing to say. Martin makes a promise that they'll visit Dinosaur World the next day. Oh, you're the bestest uncle in the whole wide world! <laughs> it doesn't take long for him to realize that his nephew is not normal, and that something is off. You wouldn't lie to me, would you, Uncle Martin? Because if you did, I'd be so angry. I don't know what I'd do. No, I wouldn't lie to you. Get in the bed. The next morning, Martin brings Clifford to work and introduces him to he and Sarah's boss, played by Dabney Coleman. My, that's the bestest looking wig I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Clifford delights in making people squirm. That was so embarrassing with Mr. Ellis. What are you looking at? No, no, I, you know. It's not a wig. I know that, sir, come on. Please don't ever tell someone that they have a nice wig. But I didn't say nice wig, Uncle Martin. I said bestest looking wig. I believe there is a difference. Unfortunately for Clifford, 
Martin gets hit with a sudden overwhelming workload. You want me to redesign the entire model in two days? That means their trip to Dinosaur World is postponed. This does not sit well with his nephew. I can't take you right now! Turn back, Uncle Martin! The freeway to Dinosaur World is not there! God, you're gonna make us run! That's so big! Bad boy, Clifford. Bad boy! While well, most 10 year olds would just throw a tantrum, Clifford takes it next level. Nobody I would despise when someone ruffles my hair like that, Uncle Martin, but not when you do it. He makes an awkward scene at a dinner party to celebrate the wedding anniversary of Sarah's parents. Have you seen Sarah? She was taken off to meet someone named Rowijni by a lady who looks like this. That's what they call a facelift. What's a facelift? Oh. He then makes things more awkward by switching his uncle's lip balm with red lipstick. Oh, Martin, you, you are hysterical. And he pours an entire bottle of Tabasco sauce in his Bloody Mary glass. Here, here. Here, here. Aren't you going to say something nice about Sarah's mother? God damn it, Daniels, get on with it. You think it's funny? No. <laughs> now, all bets are off. <laughs> When you are looking at the baseball, look at it! Oh, hit it! Hit it! Keep your eye on the ball! Like In Clifford's biggest act of revenge, he has fun with tape splicing. I've got a bombshell for you, young man. I happen to be the boss in this house, and you cannot fight City Hall. You wanted to get caught. You're the one who called us! What? Hi, this is Martin Daniels. I'm not home right now, but I've got a bomb under City Hall. Oh, and he turns Sarah against him, too. Why is his face twisted so? Martin, you need help. He's the one who needs help! He's the one! Do I take him away, but don't blame me when his head starts spinning around! There are other movies that deal with bad kids. From horror... You ask me and I say you don't even feel sorry about what happened to that poor little boy. Why should I feel sorry? It was Claude Daigle got drowned, not me. To comedy. <laughs> What's so funny? You are, you stupid dick! Clifford spans both genres. Sort of. There's never been a character quite like him. I didn't hear you get up. I've been up since five. I don't sleep as much as one might assume. The main physical distinction that makes Martin Short appear as a kid is his height. An effect achieved with oversized props and by having the other actors stand on boxes. If I were sitting here yeah. uh, with Groden, these would be cut down. I see. So I'd be sitting like this. Yes. Yes. And my shirt, my like collar would be bigger. Table. Yeah. Yes. And I'd say, hello, do you have any extra butter for a little boy like me? <laughs> the effect is enhanced with Short's brilliantly off kilter performance. Okie dokie. In the world of this movie, he's a real 10-year-old kid. Well, now, look at this big fella. Clifford, is it? Yeah. What do you want to be when you grow up, Cliff? A dinosaur. And everybody accepts him as a 10-year-old kid. Believe me, I can spot a phony a mile away. Excuse me, honey. Have you seen a gray collie dog around here? No, oh, ma'am, I haven't. Mission accomplished, friend. It's truly some of Martin Short's best work. Yes! He plays him with the same energy and bravado that he brought to his other iconic characters, such as Ed Grimley. Oh, this is too much! Wheel of Fortune! Give me a break! I couldn't be more excited, I must say! This anticipation! It's making me mental! And Jiminy Glick. And you know what I loved about you? So many people, uh, when they when they guest on these shows, they tend to be very subdued and real, but you were very big and very expressive. Right. <laughs> Clifford could easily grow up to be the Joker. He lives for chaos. I would imagine that little boy wouldn't be responsible for what he was going to do next.
This maniacal behavior is on full display when he tricks Uncle Martin into leaving town on a train bound for San Francisco. Have you seen this boy? No, sir. And afterwards, he feels pure jubilation, going full vaudeville, as ten-year-olds do. Other places only make me love you best. Tell me you're the one in all the golden west. <laughs> to top it off, Clifford throws a huge party and gets down. Fun fact, for this scene to work, the extras were required to be six feet or taller. The end result is sick, a freestyle dance-off between Clifford and a bunch of would-be basketball players. The movie's big climax involves Martin kidnapping Clifford and finally taking him to Dinosaur World after hours. Are you happy? I say I'm the happiest boy in the whole wide world, Uncle Mental Case. Once inside the park, the two men, excuse me, I mean the man and the boy, have an explosive showdown. You know, Clifford, I really shouldn't put this in hyperdrive, but I just can't seem to help myself. The ride goes haywire, and Martin is faced with an ethical dilemma. Uncle Martin, save me! Uncle Martin! I'm thinking it over! You know when you think of it? <laughs> yes. All right, he, he, he blows up a few things and <laughs> poisons people, but still. <laughs> To find that great if they had humanity. taken him, if Charles Grodin hadn't, you know, you can't break a promise to a little boy. That's right. Like Clifford. <laughs> Just take the kid to Dino Land and get it over. Dinosaur, exactly. Dinosaur, Dinosaur World. World. Dinosaur World. Yes. Dinosaur World, whatever it was, and, and he would have been happy. What is it with you and Dinosaur World? It's a sick thing! Clifford was filmed in 1990 and then sat on the shelf for three years due to the bankruptcy of Orion Pictures. Then in 1993, additional content was shot to bookend the movie. The scenes with Martin's short and old man makeup were all part of that second shoot. Mission accomplished, old friend. Finally, it hit theaters in spring of 1994. Unsure of how to market the unusual movie, producers sold it as a Home Alone style wacky comedy for children. Audiences everywhere are going crazy. Ah! Ah! Poor Clifford. It's so funny. It was great. Cool. Go see it for yourself. Clifford. Yes. It was great. I liked it a lot. Rated PG. Starts this Friday. Needless to say, Clifford had poor box office opening weekend and disappeared shortly after. But I don't want to hear it. Critics weren't sure what to make of it either with reviews ranging from bad to hostile. Clifford is like a movie from Mars. The cast contains some of my favorite actors, and yet nothing works. And I wonder if the central mistake might not have been the casting of Martin Short as the little boy. He looks so weird that there's never a moment when you can stop gawking at him long enough for the character to gather up any momentum. It is yeah. shocking, and I felt bad because I had taken a friend's children oh, to the film. Well, this is really and a I said, well, at least, picture. I said, wow. well, kids, at least you're going to remember who you saw the worst movie of your life with. It isn't fair. They're never fair. The movie's screenwriters, William Porter and Stephen Campman, were so ashamed of the final product that they used the pseudonyms J.D. Rock and Bobby Van Hayes in all promotional materials. Stephen felt that was a very cruel action, Uncle Martin. Why be embarrassed? The real shame is taking your names off this movie. They should have embraced it. I mean, seriously, the screenplay is gold, made almost entirely of quotable lines. Can you just act like a human boy for one minute here? Look at me like a person. You can't do it for more than a few seconds. Look at me like a human boy. Don't mess around with me. How is it that you're such an authority on wigs? Because my teacher, Mr. Cavanaugh, wears a wig. And he lets us play with it at recess sometimes. What are you looking at? 
Nothing. I got in a train to run away. And then when I got back, there were bikers here. And they tied me up, Uncle Martin. And then they told me stories that they do on their bikes. Some of them were fun, but some of them were scary. Director Paul Flaherty seems to feel differently than the screenwriters. In a 2019 Facebook post about a potential new project with Martin Short, he proudly refers to himself as the director of Clifford. How exciting! Clifford eventually found its right audience on home video and cable, and its fan base continues to grow to this day. If you just labeled films on box office, then poor Wizard of Oz in It's a Wonderful Life. So I don't label them failures. I call them things that didn't open that weekend. It's an idea that you can't believe got past the pitch room in the first place. And I'm sure glad it did. It's the kind of studio movie you won't see the likes of again. Thanks for the parting gift, Orion. Bye! Right now, but I'll give you a hint. Kaboom! <laughs>